Welcome to the New Trust Economy, where your hosts, Blockchain 101 author and founder of Rise Housing, Monica Profit, and Inc. innovation columnist and brand casting strategist, Tracy Hazard, explore all things blockchain, ICO ventures, and cryptocurrency. Each week, they explore businesses, applications, and venture built on blockchain or cryptocurrency and address issues like women and diversity in tech, trust and distrust, and the economics of access and value. We would like to remind our listeners that investing in disruptive tech, ICOs, and cryptocurrency is speculative in nature and involves substantial risk of loss. We encourage you to invest carefully and do your due diligence first. Now, here's today's host, Monica Profit. Hello and welcome to the New Trust Economy. I'm Monica Profit and I'm here with Oleg Giverstein. Oleg, thank you so much for joining us. He is the co-founder of Coin Rule and also the COO. So joining us all the way from London, thank you so much for coming on the show. Thank you so much for having me. Um, Coin Rule is not something that I actually am that familiar with up until I got I learned about you for this interview. So I was really excited to see that Coin Rule is a kind of a not a totally unique model, but it is a bit different than the trading platforms I've been on in the past. And I was wondering if you could tell me a little bit about what you think are the, the big things that make Coin Rule a little different from other trading platforms mm-hmm. for retail investors. Mm-hmm. Sure. I mean, first of all, we help retail investors to automate their cryptocurrency trading. Um, so if you go, let's say, on your typical trading platform and you just buy and sell a coin or a, let's say an equity, um, that's all great. But like this market, the crypto market in particular is 24-7 open. I mean, how on earth are you going to be able to, to compete with professional traders who are running algos, bots, uh, and have like four teams managing their portfolios? And our assumption was that in this new world of trading, every retail investor, every normal person trading will still need some kind of advanced tools, but those tools need to be really accessible and really easy to use. And yeah, that's, this is why where CoinRule comes in and really makes it easy for people to automate their, their trading. So when you talk about advanced tools that are really accessible, that really piques my interest. I love trading. Um, I love investing. I started by just investing, but then I really got interested in trading, mostly in 2020 because, I mean, I traded a little before that, but 2020 was such a weird pause of a year that I just sat in my yeah. pajamas and studied options and studied. Yeah, yeah. And it turns out that was when my portfolio dramatically changed because you know what? Mm-hmm. You don't have to just stick to how the market's doing. You can do more than index funds. Exactly. So it was exciting and it was, I learned so much and I practiced so many things. So of all of the like more advanced tools that you offer that you make accessible which is the most commonly used and, and why? Like, what would that be that someone goes, I need that, I didn't know I needed it, and now I'm so glad mm-hmm. it's available to me? I mean, we make it really easy to automate technical indicators. So some of like our kind of, let's say, more slightly more advanced uh, traders, they like to use indicators like moving averages, uh, the so-called RSI, the relative strength index. And those are things which today users, you know, have to calculate or like they use graphs and try to, to capture those. And with Coinu, you can just trade based on them very, very easily. Um, but the other thing which is kind of really accessible, which is really makes it easy for everyone, it's like an if this, then that style trading interface. So we don't use jargon. We don't use like any complex interfaces. It's really, you build rules using like an if- this happens, like let's say the price of Bitcoin goes up 5% um, and volume increases by 10 million in half an hour, I want to buy $1,000 of Bitcoin. And then you press launch and it goes into the market. And actually you can really combine multiple steps and you can build tens of thousands of possible combinations of rules. And you can test it also on what's called a demo exchange. So like it's paper trading, um, you can test your strategies, you can see how they perform, and you can then launch them in the real market. And I think that's that's what really our users are loving. That is incredible. Actually, that is how I started trading or investing, really, because I didn't move things around very much. Way back in 2007, when my mother was saying, oh my gosh, you know, things are looking so bad. And then 2008, when she's like, the Dow is down to 13,000, you know, and, and my mother at that time was just about to go into retirement. So it was a really Mm -hmm. scary thing for her. And um, my partner at the time just said, everyone's going to wish they get into the market right now, not out. Mm -hmm. And I was like, thought about that for a little while. 
Yeah. I was like, you know, I think that's probably a good idea. Things are really cheap right now, right? Doesn't that mean that that's, I was just such a novice, right? And so I decided to open up what now is a Google finance portfolio, but it used to be called Google mm -hmm. portfolio and you could just have a fake portfolio. And I started looking at what, you know, Oprah, the Kingmaker made, like how did she do stocks? And like, what mm -hmm. would be a socially responsible stock op like portfolio? And what are things that I'm willing to invest mm -hmm. in and not? And, you know, what's a Calvert fund look like and what's in there and that kind of stuff. And I eventually had these fake ones. And then I was like, and now I'm just going to make the Monica one and see how it performs. And it started like mm -hmm. outperforming other ones. And I was like, nice. I think I should put some money into this. So yeah, yeah, I yeah. went to, um, it's called Share Builder at the time. They were like the mm -hmm. orange cafes that were all over most of the East Coast of the US. There was like a cafe that also was connected to a bank or they'd have an ATM and they tried to encourage you to invest or deal with. Then so Share Builder came in and bought that. ING Direct got acquired by Share Builder. And then I'm suddenly at this like orange Share Builder bank, but it's all about only online. I just have to connect another bank to it, which back then was so weird, you know, and mm -hmm. uh, it, like you could never walk into the bank. What happens if you can't, what happens? You know, it's like back then we were, didn't quite know it. It was maybe 2008. And mm -hmm. I started, opened up, I made my first trade in 2009. and was like, Ooh, what's this? Bought Amazon at like 200 bucks, you know, like wow. not that I've kept all Good. of it. I mean, come on. But like, I started thinking about stuff. We had Adobe moving in to, you know, the Pacific yeah, yeah. Northwest so where I lived at the time. So I was like, we have a tech hub. I should just buy this, the stocks that are here. And, but that ability to like test it out and then see if it was working with fake money and then mm -hmm. get involved. That was huge mm -hmm. for me because it taught me, it gave me just some chance to practice. And then if I had a new idea, I could test it out while the old stuff was working and it mm -hmm. just turned me into a total nerd. It was great. That's I'm really interesting. People crypto nerds because I know exactly that kind of nerd. Yeah, that's really interesting because I think what we've been seeing over the last like year and a half is kind of exactly what you experienced in 2007 and eight. But that happened to like the the Zoom generation, you know, the, the 20 year olds uh, buying like meme stocks and like all those dog, dog coins and all this stuff, which us kind of older people we look back at it and we think it's completely crazy and it doesn't make sense but like i mean in a way i don't want to be so arrogant about it like <laughs> if the market you know if the market says that something makes sense and people are having fun and a good time doing it then you know then so be it maybe they know something that that we don't know you know yeah you know your analogy between like meme coins like gamestop mm -hmm. and dogecoin is i guess that's that's a good one because i'm so judgmental when it comes to cryptocurrency i'm like there's no utility in that i shall not touch it you know but like when yeah. it comes to meme stocks, I heard about GameStop early, like in November before it peaked in Jan in February or January. Yeah. And I was like, I think I'm gonna get into that. that Sounds pretty good. I'm gonna try that out. And so like, I was buying options on it. Like I was, I was nice. really teeing everything up. So I'm like, this is a good thesis. And if I, my options are far enough out, like I can just sit back and wait for this to happen. And then I did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I did. And I totally was in on, on, you know, unlike probably many people that are not Zoomers, I was super into the meme stock. But like, uh. With Dogecoin, I refuse to touch that. I'm like, no, on yeah. principle, I will just not. Yeah, yeah. Look, look I, I didn't buy it either. But I'll tell you something very interesting. Um, at the time when it was really peaking around like February, March as well, um, the people who were trading it the most on CoinRoo. So we have, when, when users sign up, um, they're like, they, they, they can indicate what level of experience they have as trader. So they are the complete, they are the beginners, they are intermediate and the like more advanced ones. And the users who are trading Dogecoin the most, like from those three categories where Dogecoin was like the top one, was the beginners and the most advanced ones, um, which is very interesting because the most advanced ones, they don't care. They trade whatever it is that looks good on the chart. The beginners just buy Dogecoin. Um, okay. And the ones in the middle are people like us who are like, no, I'm not going to invest in it. <laughs> it doesn't make sense. more than money, right? <laughs> exactly, exactly. It's very interesting. I, I found that fascinating. That is fascinating. I love that you can see behind the curtain to see the more the human behavior. Because I've always thought, you know, economics is really just sociology. It's applied sociology. It's sociology mm -hmm. with a purpose, right? I mean, not, yeah. not the sociology doesn't have a purpose directly, but... It's, I don't know, an easy, it's definitely better paying to be in, in economics than sociology. <laughs> That's true. That's kind of a bit the idea with technical analysis, right? Like the idea that you can kind of predict the behavior of the mass with like charts and uh, like an analytics based on basically this like herd mentality behavior. Yeah. Yeah. That actually, that kind of makes me, that dovetails well into, um, you know, you definitely, it sounds like you, uh, you've studied 
human behavior a little bit more than the average co-founder or founder of a company, of a tech company. And uh, unlike so many people, you mentioned to me before this, we started this, that you actually had a totally non-technical college degree situation, just like me. I was a big liberal arts, like, I want to just look at the world and think about people. And sounds like you did similar things like that. Yeah, yeah. So I studied politics, international relations. And as if that wasn't enough, I then did a master's degree in international relations on top. Um, so I was really like quite an academic, very nerdy guy. Um, and to, in, in my defense already in my ma- during my master's, I kind of focused more around political economy. And actually, I wrote my MPhil, my master's thesis on like the relationship between sovereign debtors and private creditors. So basically governments borrowing from banks. And it wasn't just about that. It was about how like the power balance between these two sides has historically evolved. Um, And actually that was in a way what got me into crypto then in the first place, because I was really interested in like, you know, uh, the power of the state versus, you know, the private lenders. And then also things like, you know, uh, private currencies, gold standard, just how, how, how does our today's monetary system fit into all those kind of historical developments? And just getting into, you know, Bitcoin was the, the, the natural next step, really. So that is um, that my next question. In what year? This says a lot about people usually. What year did you buy your first Bitcoin? Yeah, that's a very good question. So, I mean, I, I, I must have heard about it the first time when I was writing my thesis, which was around 2012. Fish. Oh, my God. And then I, I, but wait, wait, that's not when I bought, right? Okay. Because then I made a very expensive mistake. I went to work in banking. And when you work in banking, like, you know, it sounds like obviously you're doing something right because you're well paid, but there's a huge opportunity cost, which means you're so busy that you don't have the time to do anything else, which means that all my other interests went completely out of the window. And I just basically forgot about all this crypto world, all this exciting tech things. And I was just in this like banking bubble for four years. So that was here in London. Um, left banking in 2016 to start my first startup, which was a completely, it was a career mentoring platform, very different business. Um, I did that for a while, but suddenly had the time to actually meet interesting people, go to events and started to learn more and more about like crypto and blockchain. And at some point you go down the rabbit hole, it blows your mind. And in 2017, I got my first crypto. So Ah. actually five years later, so basically in the last, you know, in the last big bull market. um, And that's, that's how it happens. You know, people join each new cycle, each new kind of bubble cycle, whatever you want to call it. New people come in each time it gets bigger then the market slows down. Some people get bored and leave, but a lot of us stick around. And then when the next cycle comes, the people who joined in the most recent one are like the, the experts and the pros. So kind of in this cycle, because I've gone through the 2017 and 18, when I was a complete, like absolute beginner, knew nothing. And now I'm a little bit more uh, more experienced and I kind of can put things a bit more in, in proportion. So, yeah, I think that that's exactly how it worked for me, too. I, I bought my first Bitcoin in 2016 or 15, 16, when a friend of mine, rest her, lay her soul, rest in peace, Tony Lane Casserly, who's a well-known person in the crypto space, usually it has, was until her passing over the last year. Um, mm-hmm. She said on Facebook, oh, my gosh, you guys, Bitcoin's a thousand. It's getting real. And I was like, I've been watching it since it was 700. And oh, I think you're mm-hmm. right. And um I think I'm just, I, I kind of agree with that. I can probably, yeah, a thousand's good. How do I do this? And then, you know, I reach out to her. It's like Coinbase. So I'm like, all right. And then Coinbase was flooded with people right then yeah. trying to get in because it was right at that little peak or whatever. I don't know. Yeah. It just seemed like they were not prepared for what was going on. So I couldn't even get into Bitcoin it was at 2000. And I thought, that's ridiculous. I, I don't know about this now that I went ahead and bought some. Of course, like over the time, like I would sell it and buy more and sell it. And you know, I watched things get really, really good in 2017 and then crash and be like, why didn't I sell? But in the end, you know, it's just, it's like, that's why there's t-shirts that say HODL. <laughs> that's why we have that. That's, uh, you know, that's been one of my biggest lessons in this cycle, which is like, in the first cycle, I was really just trying to kind of jump into whatever seemed hot and like always chasing the latest trend. But the reality is the way to really 
do exceptionally well in this market is to have a very deep conviction. So to to be very closely familiar with a small number of projects, have very, very deep conviction, ideally be involved in it from relatively early on, and then just, just stick around, hold, keep learning about it. Because the learning you do will help you build the conviction, which will mean that when the market crashes, you're not going to panic sell it. Right, exactly. Like, and for example, um, in this cycle, I did that with Olympus DAO. I don't know if you've been following that. It's a very, very fascinating project. So I invest, I joined, I like, I invested very early on, um, pretty much in, on day one. And I've managed to like pretty much hold it without selling for like pretty much the whole cycle. And that was like by far the best investment I, I made in this cycle. Yep. I know. I've, I look at my portfolio and I'm like, I am looking at a very robust long-term retirement. I mean, this is like in a matter of very little time, this is going to be such a significant amount of money that I, I really don't have to worry about the long-term. I can worry about the short-term and the mid-term, but mm-hmm. all I need to do is just continue to dollar cost average into things and I don't have to worry about the long-term anymore. Yeah, Th- that's actually exactly how I use CoinRoll, for example. I use it to dollar cost average. So I have a standing code uh, from my bank account to my Coinbase account. And then every month, CoinRoll buys for me certain coins that I'm accumulating. So CoinRoll um, connects to Coinbase, but it doesn't connect directly to your bank account. So the way CoinU runs is it's a layer on top of the exchanges. So you can think of it as we give your exchange superpowers. So let's say you use Kraken or Binance or Gemini or and actually Gemini we don't yet have like or let's say Coinbase. You create an API key, you plug it into CoinRoo. We are a layer that sits on top and then you build your strategies and those strategies then run on these exchanges. So do you also, let's see, are those all the exchanges or like what about, you know, KuCoin or Nexo or any of the others? So we have something like, I think, 10 or 11 exchanges. We don't yet have KuCoin. It's going to come at some point. FTX? Coming. That's the next one we're working on. Great. So right, we'll have, great. Yeah, we love speaking FTX. Of, speaking of FTX, do you have any um, options or futures um, capabilities? So we have futures. Um, we have Binance futures and BitMEX. Um, we don't yet have options, but that will be coming also in one of the future releases. Man, as someone who like kind of jumped on the options rabbit hole, I have been looking for like, where am I going to find my perfect options place to just, you know, do mm-hmm. do my options trading? And I can't, it's, it's been tough to find it. Mm. Which platforms do you use at the moment for options? Well, um, let's see. Um, I was, in terms of options, I was trying Ledger X, but they require USD to do it and that's difficult. Um, and if you, and, and then your collateral needs to be in other things, but you can't trade less than USD, not even USDC, like USD, which is a pain. Mm-hmm. And then FTX.us has been really great for futures. Um, and then KuCoin, Coinbase, Coinbase Pro, some mm-hmm. BitTrue, some, um, uh, not BitMEX, we can't get on that one. What's another one? I've got several. I think I'm on a lot of them. I, I keep, mm-hmm. I try different ones to see, you know, sometimes there's a little arbitrage to be had, but really it's that there's different functionality and the interface matters so much to me. I have an arts background. And so having things well organized and getting used to them yeah. is really important to me. But um, so I know certain platforms very well, but also when I see those platforms don't have the coins listed or they don't have the functionality that I want, then I go, I should probably learn something else, you know? So mm-hmm. I just keep, yeah, yeah. and also I like to be perpetually learning. I'm really getting into DeFi more and more and staking on Aave, et cetera, et cetera. So mm-hmm. I, I like that. And and that means that I'm always going to be, you know, trying to learn the next thing, which also means it's easy to like put money somewhere and forget about it. Like I have a spreadsheet, I got to track this stuff. You yeah, know? yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, honestly, there are so many of those portfolio trackers out there. And still, I think everyone's using an Excel spreadsheet or Google Doc. It's, true. Uh, it's totally you know? true. Yeah, uh, honestly, that's the next billion dollar idea. If someone can pull pull that one off, oh uh, god, yeah. If they can, if they can just automate it. Like if they could just sit in the background yeah. and know, oh, he's making a trade. Yep, we got to find that. You know, Let's super, just super, it. super hard. Yeah. Um, one exchange we're excited we'll be adding in the future also for options is going to be Deribit, and um, Deribit is it's a D E R I bit Deribit. 
Um, that's a good one for specifically for options also. And for us, um, if you like good interfaces, that's really our bread and butter. I mean, my co-founder, Gabriele, he comes from like a design and UI UX background. And we really are like pretty much the company in the space that really focuses the most on like human-centric design. Um, so we speak a lot to our users. We really do everything to make sure that our interface is really understandable by normal people, not just by like advanced traders. And you can almost think of it like you can use CoinRu to abstract away kind of the complexity of like the trading interface that you get on some of the exchanges. That is wonderful. So, I mean, I even though I've done this for a long time, I always, I'm a sucker for somebody like basically being the apple of, you know, whether it's the apple of meditation apps or the apple of trading or whatever. That's yeah. fantastic. So you guys have a different model. You have membership models. So you charge by month. So people have mm-hmm. access to this a, a kind of like layer, extra layer of, of operability, right? Yeah, exactly. That's exactly right. So we charge a monthly subscription. There are different tiers depending on how, you know, how many like rules you want to build and how many templates you want to use. And then, uh, yeah, you can just start using it straight away. We don't charge any transaction fees, you know, so you can just start. That's awesome. And so when you connect to several different exchanges, are you also kind of getting someone uh, the best price on any one of them? Or are you are you working with like their accounts on mm-hmm. an exchange and it's just to that one? So for now, it's just the accounts on each exchange. Uh, we're going to be offering like smart routing in the future. So if you have money on multiple accounts, you'll be able to connect all three of them and then you'll get the best price depending on, you know. Where, That's wonderful. Where your that is awesome. And it sounds like you guys are growing really fast. Is that right? You're, you're growing, you're hiring, you're flourishing, you're probably going yeah. crazy as a COO and you're losing your mind. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's exactly right. I mean, um, we're we hiring like crazy at the moment, specifically for engineers. So if if, if any of your audience is interested, uh, you can reach me on Oleg at coinru.com. Um, we are hiring any kind of JavaScript, Node, React, TypeScript engineers at the moment. Also interested in blockchain developers because we are going to be building a little MVP around DeFi in the near term. Um, but basically, uh, just, yeah, just drop me an email. So it's been, I mean, super exciting time. Obviously, the market has been picking up uh, a lot over the last year. Um, and we see that like crazy, like everything has been growing. Like we've, I mean, I, I can't tell you even how much we've grown over the past year because you you, you would not believe me. Uh, we've, I mean, in, like grown over 1000% in like a few months. It's, oh my it's been God. Insane. As a COO, that must be overwhelming. But also hopefully you've put some people in place that can give you some room that you're not managing everybody that closely. Oh yeah, exactly. I mean, I'm very lucky. Our team is, is fantastic. We've uh, we've been able to hire some great people. It's really helped. So uh, as I was saying earlier, I mean, we went through Y Combinator this year. So actually we were as a company, we were London-based, but we are now a US company. We had to join Y Combinator. We had to move the headquarters to the US, which obviously has like you know, some downsides in terms of the relocation because it was quite a complex process, but it has a lot of upsides because obviously the US is such a big market and it makes it so much easier to reach uh, investors and also some of the talent. And then uh, thanks also to the like brand recognition of Y Combinator, we were able to raise a seed round uh, of 2.2 million from investors, which included um, one of the founders of Twitch, the found one of the founders of kayak.com, one of the wow. founders of Eight Sleep, and also the founder of Fitbit. So like super cool people. And that's just wow. some of them. There were a lot of also like crypto specific people in the round and so on. So we've, we've, we've been extremely lucky also with our investors. And so far, yeah, we've been putting that, that investment to good use over the last few months. So um, I have to ask, I mean, given that you've raised, it sounds like you could have potentially raised on something that would have a coin involved in it at some point. Do you have a coin? Is there a coin that you've raised? Did you use a simple agreement for equity or token? Or did you just leave tokens out of it for no, we left tokens out of it. Um, and the reason for that is it's, I mean, it's definitely something like, you know, that we would consider in the right time when, if it makes sense. Um, but for now we are like an equity based business and there's no specific use case for a token for us. Um, like really? the type the of finance coin isn't like compelling enough. <laughs> 
Well, I mean, that's down to Binance to think if their token, you know, makes sense or not. But obviously, they now have their own blockchain, uh, BSC, and I mean, whatever one thinks of it. Like, obviously, there are, you know, there are there are a lot of uh, use cases around it, and obviously, BNB is the native token, so that's fair enough. Um, kind of the token that that makes sense for a company that doesn't actually need a token is a governance token. But then we are not yet a decentralized company, so what w- what would we be doing with a token? Um, yeah, saying yeah. that. Uh, as I said, we are looking to go more into also DeFi in, over the next uh, years, and that that might, you know, if it will make sense, like we, it's definitely something we will be open towards. That's fantastic. Well, I just was hoping that my my listeners could, you know, also be like, oh, there's a coin rule token. Yeah, yeah. This is new. These guys are great. They're they're growing fast. Where can no, I get in on this? So, I, I, I'll I'll tell you I'll tell you one thing. When the token, if the token comes one day, which is an if, but for sure there would be some kind of reward for our early adopters, yeah. you know. So, uh, oh yeah, it, it always in crypto, it always pays to be early, right? You know, it's interesting because I got on iTrust Capital for my uh, self-directed Roth IRA and it worked fine, but they charged me about 30 bucks a month. And they just recently put out an email saying, we no longer have monthly charges. So I'm like, that's nice. Thanks for that. I don't know how that worked, but I appreciate it. So I'm like, hey, that's 30 bucks a month. I could just put onto another membership and get a different kind of mm-hmm. value because I mean, it was valuable to me knowing that I had a Roth IRA sitting in that was you know, invested in crypto. That was important, right? But mm. um but this is like a whole new value proposition that I'm I have, I'm not a user yet, but I'd like to become a user, especially yeah. if you guys might end up incentivizing us with coin later. <laughs> <laughs> please, please do. I mean, we're, one thing we're especially proud of is also our community. Our community is really active. We've been kind of growing it in a very curated way. We haven't like allowed it to just explode because that tends to reduce the, the kind of the quality of the conversation. But so far, like people are creating strategies, sharing strategies. There's a lot of really good vibes in there. And, and I love to see that, you know. That's wonderful. That's fantastic. I mean, the community aspect of this, as well as the membership that gets you a full community to, to swap ideas and have like-minded people and people with other strategies to, to share with you. That's that's what I was missing with Google Portfolio back in the day. Mm. So that sounds really cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So please, uh, please do sign up. Uh, like, And obviously you can you and also your listeners feel free to drop us a message on intercom or just drop me an email and we will be able to for sure sort you out with like a trial or discount or anything like that yeah maybe we can figure out a um a referral link or a a discount code Mm -hmm. for new trust economy folks and we can we can put an ad for you guys on our on our podcast and see if we can start running getting some more people to you because it's it's exciting time and what you offer is really it's such a good b2c offer that i would love to see more more of our uh listeners Mm -hmm. get a chance to get involved Absolutely. Well, fantastic. This has been great. Um, I think that we hit all the high notes because I didn't want to miss anything about what you guys were up to and what you offer, because I know that so many of our listeners are going, where do I begin and how does this work? So you still begin a Coinbase, but then after that, you go to CoinRule. That's what you do. But... That's exactly it. That's exactly it. <laughs> we should have a, a how to do it 101. I should just have an interview with someone from Coinbase and be like, all right, talk to me like I'm five. I'll just send everybody mm-hmm. to that first, you know? But, mm-hmm. um, I think we've hit all the high notes and I really appreciate you coming on and telling me about Coin Rule. This has been a really nice conversation. Thank you so much for inviting me. Absolute pleasure. I really enjoyed the conversation. Yeah, you've been great. And I know it's actually, it's not that late there. Okay. I thought it might be really late in London, but it's not. So I'm not, I can't even say thanks for staying up, but I do hope you go have happy hour or something and get out of here and have a good time. That's the plan. <laughs> That's the plan. Well, um, all right. I guess I'll just wrap this up by saying thanks for again for listening to the New Trust Economy. Oleg Giberstein and I are going to sign off and we will catch you on the next episode. Thank you so much, Oleg. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. You've been listening to The New Trust Economy. We'd love to hear your comments on today's show, as well as suggestions for future topics and guests. Visit us online at newtrusteconomy.com or on social at newtrusteconomy. Thanks for exploring The New Trust Economy with us.